This video is sponsored by Aura. Hey everyone, I'm Ace of Clay and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. This week we're jumping into the world of Courage the Cowardly Dog and I'm going to be sculpting a realistic version of one of the villains, King Ramesses. Now Courage the Cowardly Dog was definitely in my top favorite cartoons as a kid. It was creepy, it was spooky, there was always a villain. Somehow Courage always ended up defeating the villain and it was just an awesome cartoon and there are so many cool characters in this that I really want to explore. But today we're starting with King Ramesses, who is arguably the scariest villain from the series. And before we get started, the seamstress plush is back for a limited time. She is available right now at aceofclay.com. I am signing these, so if you want to get an autographed seamstress plush, go ahead and grab her now because once she's gone this time, she is never coming back. aceofclay.com, link in the description box below. Now let's get started. All right, let's get started. This guy is a pretty straightforward look. We're gonna take the original design and give it a spin to make it more realistic. Now I realize this guy is not realistic at all, but we're gonna add some more texture, add a more subdued color palette, and of course, more details while still maintaining the essence of the Courage version. His body is pretty simple, so we're just gonna cut to the chase. I feel like I've sculpted this body design like five times before. He's wearing a robe that fans out at the bottom, so we're going to flush out the size and shape and start adding folds and wrinkles. And I just want these folds to just drape downwards over his torso and legs and position them in a way that makes sense where it looks like actual draped fabric and not just a bunch of random bumps and lines everywhere. And of course, for this project, you can see I'm using some Super Sculpey Living Doll, and I bulked him out earlier with some Super Sculpey Ultralight. Now let's go ahead and give him a little bit of a texture with my Cone Shaper. Now to mimic the original, I'm just adding some points at the bottom where the robe fans out, and then we're gonna go in with some more folds and wrinkles. And just like that, his body's done and he's ready to be pre-baked. And once that's baked and cooled down, it's time to start working on his arms. Just want to add some snakes of clay to these and some bacon bonds so they attach to the wire easily. Blend some areas in and then go from there. And while I'm doing this, I want to know which Courage villain you want to see me make next. There's so many of them. I already kind of have an idea of who I want to do next, but if you guys have someone that's different, I'd love to make your request first. So let me know in the comments which Courage character I should make next. And for the next step, you can see we're working on his hands and I'm making these out of cosplay so they stay flexible after it's baked and I don't have to put armature inside the fingers. Now for all the dangly bits like his sleeves, I'm making these out of cosplay as well so they don't break after they're baked. Just gonna pop those on and make the other hand and sleeve off camera after I texture this one. Now that his body is at a good point, I'm going to go ahead and start making his head. I covered a ball of aluminum foil and clay, and I'm going to start shaping it out. 
Once I have my shape down, I want to figure out where all of his facial features are going to go, starting with his eye sockets. Using my large ball stylus, I am pressing those out, and then I'm going to work my way down to the nose and mouth. This is the most important step in the facial sculpting process. You always want to map out where every feature is going to go before you start finishing them and adding detail. Measure, double check your references, do everything you need to do to ensure everything is in the correct spot because even if something is just slightly off, it's going to throw off the whole thing. And now that I've done that, I'm going to start blending in the nose and finalizing everything. Now for the eyes, I flattened some balls of clay and I'm pressing them into the sockets and then blending the edges in with my spoon tool. To create the eyes themselves, I just press them out in the middle of the oval shapes. Now let's make his cheekbones bigger to make him look more gaunt. And to bring out his brows, I just added these tapered snakes of clay to the brow bone, and we're going to blend those in too. Now let's take a quick break for our sponsor. All right, now before we get into the rest of the video, let's take a second to talk about our sponsor, Aura. You do everything online. Aura helps you do it safely by protecting you from hackers, scammers, and spammers. Aura continuously monitors the dark web, looking for your passwords, emails, and social security numbers, and sends alerts fast to your phone or email when they find anything. Now, the second I downloaded Aura, they already found my email in the dark web and where it was breached from. Without having Aura, I wouldn't have even known this happened. Aura also gives you real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was opening a loan or a credit card in your name. They automatically send requests on your behalf to data brokers to remove your information, hoping to reduce the amount of spam and robocalls you receive. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online, keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. And their antivirus software that will block malware and viruses before they infect your devices. Identity theft is so common that there is a new victim every 14 seconds and it costs the average victim over $1,000. So what are you waiting for? Protect yourself and your family from identity theft by going to Aura.com slash Ace of Clay. Thanks again Aura for sponsoring this video and keeping my family and I safe online. Now back to our sculpture. Okay, let's finish up this face. I'm gonna add some texture, blend some things in a little bit more, get it nice and smooth, get it to a point that I like, and just make sure he looks great. Now let's go ahead and pop in his teeth. Got this flat snake of clay that I'm going to press in and bump in all the little individual teeth. Add some wrinkles to his lips. I threw in a tongue. And then let's just get everything looking good. Now he's got these three wispy, pointy pieces of hair. I'm making these out of cosplay, of course, so they stay flexible because they're really thin pieces. I got a piece of wire in there, and this is actually the first version of them. They're kind of thick because the wire I used is too thick. I end up redoing these later on. Now I'm going to start working on that tattered shawl that's blowing in the wind. Made this out of cosplay as well. I embedded some floral wire into it, added some texture and wrinkles, and we're just gonna press it on with some bacon bond. This worked so well. And that floral wire, while it is really thin, it did give me some really great shape on this shawl thing. Like, it really looks like it's blowing, I have to say. And this cosplay was rolled through my pasta maker on the four setting, I believe. 
So that's pretty thin and the wire still fit inside and it really did its job. And it, because it was so thin, it was also really light. So it was no problem getting it to stick with just a little bit of bacon bond. There we go, I popped on his head and we're gonna go ahead and pre-bake him in the oven. And once he's baked and cooled down, you can see I already removed the original pieces of hair and I made some skinnier ones that taper to a much thinner point at the end. These look way better. Just gonna texture them. I also didn't like the positioning of his head and how his neck was bent forward a little more than I wanted it to be. So I just cut the whole thing off and we're just gonna reposition things and give him his new hair. After sticking his head on in the right position, I'm gonna add some more clay to blend it into his neck. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish him up and get him ready for his last bake. And once he's baked and cooled down, it's time for paint. All the paints that I'll be using in this video are the Warhammer Army paints. I'm gonna start with this nice dark olive green for his body. And a lot of you have asked me why I switched to the Army Painter line instead of my regular folk art ones. It's um, simply because I wanted something different. I've been using folk art for like five years now, four or five years and actually longer than that because I used it before I had a YouTube channel. So I wanted to try something new and I actually first was introduced to these paints in Jazza's miniature kit that he released a couple years back and I loved them and I ended up just buying the entire line of colors recently and I've never looked back. Still love folk art though. I do think that their mats are some of the best mats on the market. I do prefer a matte paint over a satin finish but I don't know, it's time for something new, why not? And after getting the base colors down on his body, I'm going in with a black wash. This is a wash that's straight out of the bottle. It has a pretty satin finish and I'm just brushing it into all the nooks and crannies and wiping off the excess. After finishing the wash, I'm gonna go in with a dry brushing on all the fabric. This is gonna bring out all the highlights. All right, let's start painting his face. This color I believe is called Skeleton Bone. Army Painter has some great names for their paints. I think my favorite is Crested Sore. But anyway, the original cartoon has this guy, Orange. I didn't wanna use orange for his skin, so we're just gonna go with a more neutral color. Get a little wash in there. And I do think even with the color change, he does still look recognizable. Like who else has awesome hair like that? I don't know about you, but I could never pull that off. <laughs> Now I'm gonna take a more targeted approach with my wash and using this tiny brush with like three bristles on it that I paid like $10 for, I'm gonna go into all of his wrinkles individually and really heighten the detail. And I went ahead and painted his eyes the color mummy robes and we're using that nice crusted sore color that I mentioned earlier for the inside of his mouth. Look at that, so crusty. Now his teeth and the bottom teeth. And I'm gonna use this nice desaturated purple color, the name escapes me, and I'm gonna paint his hair. Is this his hair? I keep saying it's his hair, I hope I'm not wrong. Or is it like some, are these like appendages coming out of his head? I don't know. Now we're just gonna carefully highlight some things a little bit more, add some final touches. Now say it with me. 
And he is done! My realistic version of King Ramesses from Courage the Cowardly Dog is complete. Let me know what you think of him in the comments. This was a great project. I liked creating a sort of different interpretation of the character because we know the design of him in the show is pretty archaic, but it was fun putting my little spin on him and I hope you like him because I do. I think he's cool. I love all that cosplay. I always love the cosplay. I always love flicking it because it ain't gonna break. And I can reposition things if I want, like the wire in there lets me move things around after it's baked and all that, you know the drill. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Ace of Clay. Join my Facebook group, Snakes of Clay, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.